Hello, and welcome to part two of our Oregon Caves National Monument build. I'm really excited to work on the interior with you guys today. I think it's going to be really fun. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to go check out part one where we work on the ex exterior of the chateau, which you can see right here in the corner. It's such a beautiful building, and I think that the vibe and the setting is just so pretty, and the caves themselves are such a cool place to see in person. I'd really encourage you to go visit the caves. Um, if you ever find yourself in Oregon, uh, come check it out. Uh, but this video today is going to be working on the interior of the build, and I didn't, I had a few pictures on the inside, and I've been inside myself so I knew a little bit of what it looked like but I think this is definitely just sort of inspired by the interior of the, the chateau it's not really like it uh, like this in real life very much but I think that we've got a few of the really important and cool aspects including the very fun diner that is on the first floor of the real Oregon cave chateau it's just got such a fun sort of vintage vibe here's a picture of you of it for you to see um, I love that the counters have the space for the server to come bring your food right to you. It must, it, I feel like that's so efficient. I really like the efficiency of that. Um, and it's just sort of open up in this area. You've got the kitchen just right there. You, you know, you don't get too much fancy stuff here, but you can get a tasty grilled cheese or a hamburger or something like that, uh, which is always just so fun after you've, you know, spent a couple of hours in a, a dark cave. You need a little bit of food to refuel. So I think that this diner is one of my favorite aspects of the chateau, and I think it's just such a fun part of it to, to recreate. So I hope I've done it justice. Uh, this is me sort of just starting on the design and the color scheme. I do come back and change a lot of the layout because I ended up not liking how this little corner of the wall kind of made the layout kind of funky. So I ended up changing that a little bit. And then by changing that, I ended up, up changing a lot of the other things. But I did want to give you a quick, just like a view of sort of the initial uh, layout. So you can see that when I'm building in The Sims, the process is always very sort of fluid. And I just kind of see if I like something. And if I don't like something, I'll come back and fix it. Or, you know, maybe I'll start one way and then decide, oh, this isn't good. Or I'll do something different. Um, or sometimes, you know, I feel like if you find an item that you didn't really remember was there uh, to begin with, that just seems to fit super well. Sometimes I'll go back and try to incorporate or, or really feature that item as part of that area of the build. So that's kind of uh, my process when I'm building is just going through and seeing if I like it. Uh, this is, I always did this too with the uh, gift shop that we're working on right here. I didn't really like how that corner made it kind of awkward back there. So I just kind of turned it into like, like a storage area, I guess, kind of back there. I feel like uh, a gift shop's got to have a storage area, so it makes sense, I think, in the <laughs> for actually having a, a gift shop right there. Uh, but right now we're kind of back to the kitchen, working on the tile. I tried to pick something just kind of vintage that would work with the layout and the scheme in the rest of the building. Um, and I do love these stools. I think these stools really capture the vibe that I was going for, that sort of 50 style vintage diner. So I'm really happy with that. Um, and right there, that's just sort of trying, me trying to create a little bit of um, separation between the two areas of the downstairs room here. I think it's important to have a bit of separation between the eating area and the sort of main area, which in the real Oregon Caves Chateau does have a restaurant and a gift shop on the first floor. So you've got all of those things um, actually in real life. And they're, in real life, they're a little bit more separated. There's kind of some actual like room separation between, uh, between these different spaces in the real place. But I think one of the reasons why I wanted to keep this open is because I really love this sort of like dramatic stairway that you get with the two stairways kind of parallel to each other. I really liked how um, dramatic and fun that was. So I, I wanted to sort of leave that even if I did a sacrifice a little bit of, um, I guess, realistic <laughs> integrity for that. It's it's okay, I think, in the long run. And uh, one of the kind of funny things about doing this build is that in the game time, it was nighttime. So I would like go and switch it to gameplay so that I could test something with my, you know, helpful tester, <laughs> Emilio, who <laughs> kept getting really, really hungry. I was 
oh, I'm sorry. So as soon as I put the kitchen in for the, the restaurant, I was like, okay, you can go eat a snack. You're getting really hungry. Um, and here I kind of skipped over a little bit of the middle um, of the bill just because it was getting kind of long and it wasn't the most important part, I think. I do, I am pretty happy with how this restaurant on the second floor uh, turned out. I love these little details. I love the candles. I think it just fits in so well with the, the vibe of the restaurant. It's supposed to be kind of a fancier place to eat. You know, you've got your like quick diner on the first floor, but then you've got your kind of fancier, like nice restaurant on the second floor. It doesn't actually work out that way in the gameplay. It's just kind of the same restaurant because you can't like set two restaurants on one place. Um, but it's fine, you know. And this is sort of my inspiration. You can see this is kind of the, this is a photo from the National Park Service that's showing off the interior of the of the build. So you can kind of see it's got this woodsy vibe. You've got a lot of wood paneling. I love just these huge trees that provide the support beams um, inside. So I try to sort of keep that vibe in mind. Um, and I ended up using a lot of the items from the camping pack, the camping sims pack, like these chairs. I love these, wo these wood log chairs. I think they're really cute and I think that they fit in really well. So I was really happy to find those. And I also found a, a way to use this like little chef's window uh, window station, which I think is just so fun. I love the window station. I feel like if I'm designing a restaurant, I don't often get a chance to use it because I, I don't know, usually like the kitchen is sort of off on its own, but here I think it fit in really well to have that little like kind of window where you could go and get your food uh, picked up by the waiter. And then you've got this really lovely uh, space to eat it over here. Um, and I did add a couple of bathrooms in the back. So there's a few um, areas for uh, Sims to go on each floor, um, which is nice. And then I'm just kind of adding some decoration and some texture inside of the restaurant. I wanted it to feel kind of romantic and fun. So I added some of these lights, which I think I look, which think I think they look pretty cute. Uh, there's also sort of a, a bar on the other side there, which you can see. Um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time going over the bar, but there is a bar in there. I used a lot of the stuff from the Windenburg pack in it because it was kind of sports bar -y, which, I don't know, that vibe goes with the chateau, I think, but not like as well as some of the other vibes that you could see. So uh, now we're just kind of working on the front porch, adding a few things for people to use and places for people to sit. Uh, there's just a lot of really fun um, items that I think ended up working out pretty well um, in this build. So I was really happy with that. And uh, yeah, so I love this carpet. I feel like this carpet is kind of hard to use because it's got this weird shape. It fit so well in here, I think. The uh, color is really nice and the size, I made it a little bit larger than it comes just regularly and it ended up working out really well. So I was, I was quite happy with that. Um, and right here, we're working on the upstairs. Uh, I have sort of this concept of like one big shared bathroom that like people using sort of these smaller rooms would use. And then the like nicer, larger rooms um, at the end have their own bathrooms. So you've got these kind of different tiers of places that you could stay if your Sims wanna go. You know, they wanna stay on the cheap side, then they could go in one of these smaller rooms, or if they wanna, you know, have a very luxury experience, they would get one of the rooms that has its own bathroom. But if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I really love that decorating the bathroom. <laughs> I think it's really fun. I don't know why I like it, honestly, but I always really enjoy decorating the bathroom. Um, and this bathroom is no different. I think the tile is great. I feel like national park, uh, like bathrooms kind of have a vibe of, as any like public bathroom area, it has a vibe that's just sort of like easy to clean, kind of simple. Um, but I tried to add some plants to spice it up. Uh, you know, this is like a nice place that you would go with your family or maybe with your partner to celebrate like, an anniversary or something like that. So I wanted to make sure that it felt nice, but also, you know, it's like run by the National Park Service. So it's not going to be super fancy or anything like that. So just kind of try to keep that in mind when I was decorating. Um, the bathroom and adding lots of fun little details. I love these little hearts, the wooden hearts I think are super cute. So I was happy to be able to add those in a couple of times. I don't think I've ever actually used those before. Because I, I feel like they don't fit in a whole lot of settings, but right here they're really cute, so I was happy to use them here. Um, but just kind of adding a few more details to the bathroom here. Uh, there's like two sort of separate bathrooms in the back so that people could have a couple of different bathrooms to use. Um, but you'll see like this room has its own bathroom. 
Um, and that's because it's a little bit fancier. So that way you have kind of your own like master suite with a little sitting area and a nice bedroom. And you even have your own little private balcony. So this is sort of like the fancy, the fancy room for people to stay in. I did try to add some fireplaces around in all of their rooms just because I felt like that would be definitely something that was in the rooms in the 19, like early 1900s. So I think that is something that is really fun here. Um, there aren't any uh, fireplaces. I think there's a, maybe a couple of fireplaces in the chateau in real life, but I don't actually remember seeing any. So I'm not sure if they're there in real life, but I thought that they fit the vibe really well. So I was happy to have them um, in this in this build as well. And I think that there's a lot of really cute styles that fit in well with this sort of cabiny woodsy vibe, which is really what I was going for um, throughout this whole this whole build. I love this bed. I think this bed is so pretty. It's one of my um, favorite furniture pieces, I think, in the whole game, just because it's like, I love the curve of that wood, and I think it's so pretty. And our poor tester, Emilio, was getting very tired, so I <laughs> let him go to bed for a while. Um, I think it's really helpful to build in the like actual play mode of the game just because you can kind of test things as you go and you don't have to like reload the game and then do a bunch of testing and find that like oh this one thing doesn't work and now that this one thing doesn't work you have to like go and fix everything that you've did, done already so i think it's kind of nice to be able to switch back and forth between the modes and um just build that way it's a little bit more difficult on like when you're building a residential lot because sometimes it will connect the money your sims has to um, what you're building so this is like a community lot and so i just kind of have unlimited money to improve it i don't need to worry about that as a problem but if you're doing a residential lot it can be a little bit annoying but you can always just you know give yourself money or i don't know do it a different way if you don't like it that way but i think it's nice to have a sim kind of ready to go and available to help you <laughs> It's kind of funny. I had him climb like a set of stairs like a bunch of times to make sure it works. I kept doing like little changes to like the terraining around the stairs. It's like, okay, what's going to work here? And I tried to put some like items that you might find um, at a hotel um, on this little table right here. I have some tissues, like a room service menu. I think that would be really cute um, there. And of course, you got to have some plants. I feel like plants add a lot of texture and sort of like depth to the room, which is a very fun um, aspect. And of course, this little chess table is so cute. So I added that chess table. You got this cute little window right next to it as well. I think this would be such a fun room to stay in in real life. I think it's so pretty. I'm trying to add a few more um, pieces of art. And then, of course, this is the exterior area that you kind of have separate um, and to yourself. Um, it's a little bit funny. Since the lot is set as a residential lot, or excuse me, not a residential lot, a restaurant lot, the Sims will just, like, seat anyone anywhere when they're eating at the restaurant. So I was sort of just, like, had the game on and, like, kind of playing through a little bit. And, like, there's, like, some people just, like, eating dinner out here on this private balcony. I was like, oh, I don't know if I can lock this away from you because it's not a residential lot, but oh, well, I guess. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> you just kind of have to pretend that it, there's a, a hotel on the first floor that kind of has these private rooms. I feel like I'm a little bit surprised that there's not, like, a hotel, like, sort of game in-game function because I feel like that would be really fun for these like vacation areas and um, like building like cool areas like this so it's a little surprising I maybe they'll add that in the future or maybe it'll be in a new game that would be pretty fun I tried to add a lot of these little national park details around where I could because I thought that they were super cute and I love these lanterns they're so fun I feel like maybe they don't fit quite as well as they could <laughs> But I really like them, and so I added them to that back porch anyway, which, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta, like, be like, you know what, this isn't perfect, but it's so cool, I gotta add it. <laughs> um, and this room, this room is kind of funnily shaped, I guess, but I feel like it was sort of like a mid-range room. It does have, um, you have to use the shared bathroom, but it is quite a bit bigger, and you do have this nice fireplace in the room, so it's a little bit nicer than maybe some of the smaller rooms on the side. Uh, there is one room that just has a single bed in it, so for the very uh, frugal vacationer, I suppose. But this is sort of the mid-tier uh, room for the upstairs hotel area. And 
there's a I love these shelves. I feel like it's a little bit hard sometimes to like figure out how to get stuff to look good on the shelves because sometimes it will like auto populate there and sometimes you kind of have to manipulate stuff to have it stay on the shelf. Um, I ended up finding a very cute little duck sculpture which I thought fit really well so I was happy about that but sometimes it can be a little bit hard to figure out what you want to put on the shelves because like, well is this going to just automatically work or is this not going to work at all? I'm not sure. Um, and so here is, this is sort of one of the smaller rooms but it does have a double bed in it um, and that's you know, kind of for like a a couple or something on a on a budget, maybe a young couple coming to stay at the chateau. When uh, my husband and I, uh, we weren't married quite yet, uh, but we had been together for a while, and for one summer we decided to do a really long road trip um, all around uh, where we live. Which uh, we live in the Pacific Northwest, so Oregon was definitely on that bucket list. We did go to the Oregon Cave Chateau and we stayed in one of the hotel rooms um, up on the top floor. So I imagine maybe some some couple in the same situation that we were in would go and stay in this sort of like economy room at the side, which I really loved uh, that trip. It was such such a fun trip and the, the Oregon Cave Chateau and the Oregon Caves themselves were a big highlight um, for that trip because it was just so fun and so beautiful. The caves themselves are so much fun, but also the chateau is really cool. It's just, it's got such a cool vibe and it's this it's vintage vibe with the fun restaurants and the cafe and the fancy, there's a fancy um, restaurant in it as well. So all of that combined just makes it a really fun trip with a little bit of hiking, a cool cave experience and tasty food all around, highly recommended and very, very fun. And this, I didn't really know too much to do with this area of the back porch. So I kind of just made it like a communal, like come out and enjoy the view because it's really beautiful out here. Uh, that's kind of what I was imagining it would be back here for folks. And I, I did use these lanterns, which maybe don't fit super well, but I think are so cute that I couldn't not use them. Um, right here, this is kind of a funny little um, just secret room at the top, I guess. I wasn't really sure what to do with it for a long time. I was like, well, I guess I could I don't know, make just like another room. But then I kind of decided to just make like a staff hangout area. Because the roof was so complicated for this build, it ended up being not a very functional room. You can see the roof is kind of like cutting through um, in ways that it shouldn't. Um, and so I just tried to keep it like super simple and made it like a little like staff area where maybe the staff go to like escape on their break or maybe it's just kind of a secret room that only some people find and you've just got this one little ladder up to it and just like kind of some junky old furniture that I don't know the hotel can't use anymore and <laughs> I did find um, just like a couple of fun things in here like an old lamp I ended up putting like a uh, like some wine bottles on the table. So this was a really fun kind of way to finish out the build, I think. Um, and of course I did test it. My um, faithful Emilio did come up here to make sure that it does work. He's so sad, but he made it. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had such a fun time making it. And uh, I hope that you check in for our next one. I think we're going to be doing something that is a much different vibe for our next video. It's going to be a mid-century modern build. So uh, here's a few photos of the house and the chateau uh, inside and outside. So thanks so much for uh, watching and I hope to see you guys soon.